Hello. Uh, welcome to game three of the match between Steinitz and Gunzberg. In this match, there's just a, a, one little important positional idea that I wanted to share. I feel like in almost every chess game, there's something to learn. And you should try to... I mean, if you can learn one thing from every chess game, you're going you're gonna to learn a lot of stuff if you look at a lot of games. The best thing, though, is to not just look at a game randomly. Just try to find one thing. You don't have to learn ten things. Just one. It can be really small. Um, if you notice again, by the way, Steinus has played this very strange idea of f3. He's getting a little cocky in his championship state and thinking he can do whatever he wants in the opening, including not developing his pieces in any normal way. So my question here is, black to move, what would you do? Pause the video, try to figure it out. Uh, so, basically, there's a very standard operation in a position like this. The center is kind of strange for white. I mean, he's not castled yet. Uh, his knight's in a weird square in f4. What we want to do is gain space in the center. Like, white has a little bit more space in the center now. We want to find a way to contest that. Now, we could play e5 immediately. Which is a totally fine move, but after pawn takes, knight takes, pawn takes, black is at some point going to be left with an isolated pawn, which we would like to avoid if we could in this particular case. So the best move, we take on c4, and after bishop takes, we play e5. And after this, black has a some kind of initiative. The key here, though, is you need to be experienced with these pawn structure type of questions and changes. These types of moves are kind of obvious to really strong players. And one of the big differences is, is pawn structure understanding between IMs, GMs, and just regular masters. So after e5, if, if white takes, uh, black can take back in tempo on the bishop, and we just have a nice development advantage. Uh, Another interesting move, too, is perhaps queen a5 is interesting. In the game, knight e2 was played, black took, and now white took with a pawn, giving up the isolated pawn. Um, and again, if knight takes, black just has an adv development advantage. This bishop's weird, um, knight e5 gains some time. It's just a little, it's just better for black. But he took with this, and black still has the advantage. However, he wasn't able to make anything real out of it. The advantage is not serious. It's, it's, it's definitely an advantage, but it's not like anywhere near a winning advantage. Knight f to d5 turns out not to be such a great move, but it's very logical. You know, isolated pawn, trade things off. Knight to g3, bishop g6, knight on c to e4, and white's starting to come to c5, which could be annoying. Knight b to d5, queen d2, b6, rook a e1, queen d7, rook a to d8, rook f to e1, knight f5, knight c3, knight takes, pawn takes, and and we just kind of traded everything off here. Rook f, queen f4, rook takes, rook takes. Now he wants to go queen d6 and trade some more. By the way, just to point out, knight c3 is a little strange as a move, but the point is if we move the knight away, rook e7, and otherwise black will take here, and when we take with the pawn, our d-pawn is a little weak, basically. White could perhaps attack it. Like, just as an example, let's say we go random move. In these types of structures, usually white has some advantage, because he can attack our, our pawn, whereas his bishop's kind of stuck defending it, and it can't attack our pawn. So that's why he took... And then rook f8, rook f8, queen f4, take, take. He didn't want to do this because rook e8 wins the queen, or even just queen takes and back rank mate. So he played king f8, uh, king f2, queen d6, and the game was agreed drawn. But you learned something important if you didn't already know it, and it's the importance of these kind of key central breaks, like where you take on c4 and go e5. Those types of moves are really important. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.